If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nexus Corner. I'm Richard, and today we're going over Premium Gurgit with the uh, new support from the new Premium Collection 2022. Isidrus kind of gives off the same uh, vibe as Gurgit, just with that uh, whole rearguard's placed by card abilities gaining power. I decided to give my Premium Gurgit deck a little bit of an upgrade using uh, units based on Isidrus' ability. So I'm just kind of going to go over uh, what the deck looks like right now. Starting off with our starter. Our Knight of Early Dawn, Coel, which is, according to some players, not the optimal starter just because it gives away that you're not playing Ezel. But to that I say, I don't need my opponent to know that I'm playing Ezel. All I need them to know is that I'm still gonna win regardless. Also, Kirf doesn't come SP, so we're running Coel. <laughs> All right, now we're going into our grade threes. Starting off, we got four copies of Sunrise Ray Knight Gurgit. So Gurgit skill is when a unit's called by a card ability, if your opponent's at grade three, that unit called and this unit get five, have 5K for every marker you have. The more markers you acquire, the stronger the units are gonna be. The second skill is when it attacks or when it is attacked, you kind of lost one. Look at top five, you call them to rear guard. You call two things to rear guard circle. If it's being attacked, you call two things to guardian circle. So it's got a great defensive ability for premium which is helpful. You only use it once per turn but it's still overall really good because you can call perfect guards from your deck to the guardian circle and kind of get past those guard restrict. Or if it's just like a really really big number like somewhere in the 70 or 80k you can just kind of blast one top four get a pg. So Gurgit's great. And what else is great at premium is being able to run four percivals in your deck. Bluish Flame Litter Percival. First skill, all your units on additional markers get 5k if this is on the van. Second skill, placed on van or rear. Count Blast 1, discard a card. Get an imaginary gift excel, search your deck or drop for Aglavail. Call it, shuffle your deck if you searched your deck. And uh, you can only use the ability of this once per turn. This is just obviously really great because you can write it and get two markers. You can call it as a rear guard when you search it from the deck and uh, it just helps you make your Gurgits bigger. Percival and Premium is just astoundingly good. So, love it. It's my favorite card in this game. Next up for grade three normal units, two Sagamores. Uh, I do the two just because it does help you call things by card abilities, which is nice, but I really don't feel like I need any more grade threes to kind of help me pay costs for strides. And there's just other units I would rather run just to kind of make up for you know, abilities, uh, the grade two lineup, the grade one lineup's kind of like, I don't want to go any less. So the two Sagamore works just fine. And it's just a great regret skill. It's when it's placed on Banner Rear from hand, Soul Blast one, draw a card, then call something. Works really good with Sidrus. Running it at the two is fine in premium grade twos. Starting off with our three copies of Aglavale. Aglavale skills when it's placed on van, count plus one, look at top three, call something, rest go to bottom. On rear guard, when you swing with it, you suck up another rear guard into the soul. It gets 10k and you bounce it back to your hand at the end of the battle. So you can swing with it, bounce it, something lets you call from hand during the battle phase, you call it back out. And it's searchable with, by Percival, so you're guaranteed to search these out. You can call from drops, I don't feel like I need to run all four. But it's a great right target, great power gainer, and it's good discard fire because it bounces back to your hand. So that's why I want to run it at at least three. That's the the ratio I'm pretty comfortable with. Running three copies of Wonder Ezel. So Wonder Ezel, we don't use it for the first skill, we use it for the second skill, which is when it's placed on rear. You call a card from hand. Procs off Gurgit, lets you proc off Dindrain. There are actually a lot of cards in this deck that have effects based on when they're card by called by card abilities. So Wonder Ezel helps activate those for free. So I do like it at the three. There's just a lot of versatility there. Now we're going into our Paramours. So I run two copies of it. What it does is you can counterblast one when you during the main phase for act, call a grade two or less from hand, then you draw a card. So that way you're kind of like balancing it out, but then you can actually proc off the ability because being called by a card effects, so you can proc off Dindrain to Soul Blast and draw or counter charge. It has the other skill too, that when it's placed by a card ability, either to the rear guard or guardian circle, it gets 5K power or 5K shield. So if you call it out with Gurgit, extra shield if call with Slay Me or with Sanctified. So there's a lot of circumstances where you're, beat, where you're calling cards from the deck to the Guardian Circle, so these have a benefit there as well. It's also searchable with Jeffrey, so that's why I like it there too. So there's a lot of reasons why I feel like the two Paramours do come in handy. So good right target, decent rear guard, really great Guardian. I like it too. 
Time for my one ofs. I have a bunch of one ofs in this deck and I love it. One Canarius. So my Canarius, what it does is unite. If your Vanguard has Gurg in its name, it gets 4K. So it's a 13K beater to get over those force members. Second skill is when it's placed, you can discard a card from your hand, GV1. Look at top three, call something, and the rest go to bottom. So this helps you proc off abilities of things being called by card abilities. So that's another way to do that. But I like it at the one just because this is essentially, if I was running four Wonderizzle, this would be the fourth one. So that's the way I see it, but it's just, a different cost and a different way to call out units, so that's why I like the one Canarius. Gets an extra 4k, so it's a 13k beater. I'm running one Arthen. I love this card in, in Gold Powder, and it's great. Arthen is from DBT05. It is a D series card. I think it is the only D series card in this whole deck. Its first skill is all of your rear guards with different card names from this card cannot be chosen by your opponent's card abilities. So if your opponent is gonna choose a target for something, they have to choose this. If you swing with this first, they have to cannoneer it. They have to denial griffin it. They have to like, even if this is your lowest and weakest column, this is the only target. Cause if they decide not to kill this, the rest of your units cannot be touched. I do it at one just because it's an Ultima search. And if basically meaning that when I swing with this first before I swing with everything else, my opponent has to kill it. Second skill only applies if you have Persona Ride, but we don't, so. We're using it for the, uh, the resist, essentially. One copy of Providential Angel, it's because it, it's just really good with Ultima. It's if you have one or less card in hand, you can bless one. Your opponent can only call one PG for the entire turn or one Sentinel during the whole turn, and it gets 10K. So this is so that when you go to Ultima, you search this out, you do the cost. Now your opponent can only PG once. They're usually just gonna PG your Vanguard Ultima, meaning the rest of those attacks with all those extra Excel markers, they cannot use perfect guards. Lastly for my one ups this one is an iffy one, but I have had games where just this card's present alone did make a difference. If you don't feel like running this, you can just run like another Sagamore if you want, that's fine. What it does is it has effects based on how many you called. If you called two or more, your opponent cannot intercept. If you have four or more called, it gets 5K, so it's a 14K beater. But the main thing is because your opponent can't intercept, and that can make a really big deal if you're swinging at your opponent's Vanguard and they have a bunch of huge shield in hand and they don't want to waste it, they're gonna have, they can't intercept. So that can be a little helpful tech. There's just a lot of like, effects going on in this deck. It's a lot of fun. All right, now we're moving on to grade ones. Best right target, which is Sunrise Knight Jeffrey. What it does is when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, look at top seven, search for Gurgit or Paramore. So that means we have six potential targets from our top seven, which is nice. And then you just add it to hand. Second skill is just like Paramore's, when it's placed by card ability, rear guard, it gets 5K. Guardian Circle, it gets another five shield. So it already has 10 shield, meaning that if it's called by uh, Slamy Flare or Sanctified Dragon, it becomes a 15k shield, which is really great because it's basically like a trigger. Because there is a lot of abilities in this deck that's being called by card abilities, I'm utilizing more of the Jeffrey and the Paramour skills. So I'm really liking how that's working out in this deck. Now we're going on to our next grade one, which is Gorbaduck. So Gorbaduck is our grade three searcher. You ride or call it, you look at top five. Well, it has to be called from hand. Look at top five, look for a grade three at the hand. Um, we have grade three heal triggers. We want to ride Gurgit. We want to search Percival. Sagamore is a great target. So all of our grade threes in this deck are amazing searches. So this will always be a helpful card when you get the search. And also it's 5K ability is really easy. It's just, you have to call two things. So you're all pretty much always going to get that extra 5K off Gorbaduck, which is nice. Lastly for our grade ones is a forever staple, pretty much, for Dindrain. Uh, when it's called by a card ability, you Soul Blast 1, you can either draw or counter charge and gain 3k. You're gonna use the counter charge a lot just because you wanna guarantee Ultima, which is CB2 for cost, or you can draw cards if you have open counter blast. Maxing out the Dindrain lets you max out the resource. We're now moving on to trigger units. For Clarity Wing, it's a uh, Heal Guardian, like all the other ones, you can either, if your opponent has not ridden to grade three, you can either 10K to your van for the turn, negative two crit on an opponent's attacking unit to the end of battle. And then if you call it to a rear guard circle from hand, you can put the top card of your deck in your damage zone if you have no damage. So you can work with a single counter blast. It's a grade three, it's a heal, and you could search it with Gorbaduck. So Clarity Wings are great. Moving on to our next set of triggers. We are of course running the four 
Halo Shield Mark PGs, because not only is it just a draw trigger that is also a Sentinel PG, its skill allows it to be called from deck to the Guardian Circle. So Sanctified, Gurgit, uh, Slamy Flare, so many different ways that you can call cards from your deck to the Guardian Circle, especially because Gurgit lets you look at top five, Slamy lets you look at top five, tons of ways you can get off that. Mark is just a staple for Premium Gold Paladin. And because we are playing the Ultima game, our last triggers are our eight crits. We are our Premium Crits, which both of these got reprinted. Gold Garnish is if you're gonna pay coffs for Stride, this becomes a grade three. Theodora is when your Vanguard attacks, you can move this to Soul for GB1. Your Vanguard gets 10K and you gain a crit. No over trigger because of the Ultima over, over trigger choice restriction. Overall, just a really great trigger lineup. Now it is officially time for the fun stuff. Three copies of Gurgit Helios. Gurgit Helios, I'm running at three just because one's pretty much flip fodder, but um, you're pretty much only gonna go into this once. You act, flip it, when you're in Unite, now you have quad drive, so it's just for the quad drive. Second skill is GB3, it gets 5K for each rear guard, and your opponent cannot call grade one or greater cards. So I would typically use this in the, I guess you could say Luard matchup, because I know that they run Ezra's PGs. So against certain decks where if I notice my opponent has grade one PGs, like if I'm playing against Night Rose, or Beatrice, I guess would be the name of the deck, that would be an exception to like, oh, I know that they only have, they only have uh, grade one PGs. It's mostly there for the flip fodder and the quad drive, so Helios is always just like a good, like, you know, standard G unit. Going to two copies of Brambent, which is usually my first stride, I've noticed, just because in a lot of scenarios, I, I like the multi attack and I like the crit. So, what it does is when it swings, you flip a G unit face up, put two of your regards to the bottom of your deck, you draw two cards, then call up to two, meaning you can call none. If you called, at least two, it gets a crit. You could literally just call two Dindrains and then Soul Blast two to draw two. Whoops. Bram, it's just a really good card for like early game push. Next up, I decided I'm gonna go with two copies of Glorious Raining. I go back and forth between this and um, Heavenly Logger get. So Glorious Raining is when it attacks, you counterblast one, flip a copy of itself face up, put two of your regards to the bottom of your deck, look at top seven, and from among those seven, you call equal to the number of face up units in your G zone. Then if you called at least three three or more, soul charge and counter charge. So you get the counter blast back. And the soul does help because it helps you pay for costs for things like Sanctified Dragon. If you don't want to play the ultimate game and play with over triggers, you could do Glorious Raining and Heavenly Law Gurgit. That's perfectly fine too. They both have their pros and cons. Next up, two copies of Assidrus Continuous. All your regrets placed by card abilities get 5k. When it attacks, you counter blast one, Put all of your rested rear guards to the bottom of your deck. Choose up to two cards from your hand and call them. And then if you put four or more cards to the bottom of your deck, you restand this with drive minus two. This card is very, very, very iffy, but I have won games with this card alone, so I can't say it's bad. I've only ever needed to use it once. I've never gone into it twice. That's kind of just the overall moral of the story here. Still used it, just never twice. The one copy of Spear cross dragon. I mean, if you really want to, you could drop an Acid just for another spear cross, just because I know people like to use it for the act ability and then stride into it normally later. I'm using it just the one because I'm using it as like a gold paladin specific Sabreeze. So its skill is counterblast two, unite if uh, your vanguard's currently at grade three, you just counterblast two, discard, stride. So it doesn't matter when your opponent rode, if they rode, so this is a great counter to those decks that ride back down to grade two, because you just boop, stride anyways. Second skill is Soul Blast One, flip anything in your G zone face up. Look at top five, call two things, shuffle your deck. If you're planning on playing Gold Paladin Premium, you definitely want to have at least one of this. If you want to run more than one, go for it. Icing on the cake here, Ultima. This is basically the card that pretty much wins like nine, 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 nine times out of 10. Like, like it's like pretty much a like almost 10 out of 10 times I win with this card. On place, CB2, look for four cards, put two on the board, two on the top of your deck. For the rest of the turn, all of your units gain whatever your trigger effects are. So you stack two crits on top. When you drive check them, now your whole board gets plus 20K and plus two crit. If your opponent's at three damage and you have one, two, 
three, four, five, six extra rear guard attacks, and all of them deal three damage and are at plus 20k apiece. It's a kill turn. Plus, you have Providential Angel, like I said earlier, makes it so they can only PG once, so they can only PG the Ultima, and the rest they have to basically at least take one, and three to six, they're dead. Ultima's a fair card. So. Love it. All right, now we're moving on to G Guardians, starting off with the new one. Two copies of Sanctified Dragon. Love this thing. This thing is so, so good. It's when it's placed, you Soul Blast one. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Call them the Guardian Circle. If you called at least one grade one or greater, you draw a card. Sanctified is such a, such a good G Guardian. I love this card. It's definitely up there in like the top G Guardians from Fighters Collection 2022. Speaking of really good G Guardians, the classic Slamy Flare. It's, you put a rear guard to the bottom of your deck, look at top five, call two things of different grades to guard circle, and uh, this is pretty much how you find your PGs. Always a really good staple uh, G Guardian. I really don't see this going away unless they make a G Guardian that calls from deck to the rear guard circle directly. Then we get into some spicy uh, Cannoneer Denial Griffin plays. Last but not least, the one Elise. Uh, this is because it flips uh, G Guardians face up. So if I want to go into First Strike Ultima, that is something I have access to. Counter Blast one, flip a G unit or G Guardian face up. Look at the top two, call one to the Guardian Circle. And at the end of the battle, if the attack did not hit, the unit gets moved to a rear guard circle. It's helpful, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> That was pretty much it for the deck profile. Like always, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, just let me know in the comments section below. Gold Paladin in general has just always like been my thing. And honestly, I'm just really happy that I can just do this ride line again from back in the good old days, back in uh, back in G. It can go from my, my Coel my, to my Jeffrey to my Paramour to my Gurgit. I get to run my favorite card at four copies and I get to make my opponents cry with Ultima. I've had a lot of fun with this deck and um, I think if you have accessibility to build this, you should try it out. It's a lot of fun. So thank you again for watching. I very much appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.